One painful part of keeping a .files directory is managing symbolic links between your configuration files and the locations where they need to go in your home directory. In this video, I'll show you how easy it is to use GNU STO to automate the creation of all your symbolic links with one single command. Stick around to learn more. What's up, everybody? Welcome to System Crafters. I'm David Wilson, and I would like to ask you that if you enjoy this video, please click the like button below. It really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. And also, if you enjoy the content I make on this channel, uh, check out the link below to support the channel. It would really help me out a lot. I appreciate it. So to get started, make sure that you've already set up a .files directory like the one I've described in the video called How to Create a .files Folder. In this video, I'm going to assume that you have a .files directory located right inside of your home directory and it's called .files. So that's the word .files with a period in front of it. And if you follow the video that I mentioned before, you will have a folder like that already. Uh, you're also going to need to install GNU STO and you can find it in the package managers of most GNU Linux distributions using the package name STO. It's very easy to install. Just consult your normal documentation about how to install packages for your distribution. Uh, if you're on Mac OS, you can install it with Homebrew via the brew install STO command. Uh, thankfully, you have it easily there as well. And uh, you might be surprised to find out that on Windows, you can also install STO via the msys2 command shell. Uh, follow the link below if you haven't never heard of that before. It's a very useful tool. And you can use the pacman command there to install sto but one important thing is to make sure that you run the msys2 command shell as an administrator and have the msys2 sorry the msys environment variable set to the string that i have below here you can copy and paste from the show notes uh, so that it creates symbolic links uh, correctly otherwise sto is just going to copy the files which you really don't want you want to have those symbolic links uh, set up correctly so GNU STO describes itself as a Simlink farm manager, but in practical terms, it's basically just a program that can mirror the structure of one directory into another by creating symbolic links back to the original files. And this is extremely useful when you have a directory full of configuration files, like a .files uh, folder, that's managed by Git, and you want to send all of those configuration files to where they belong in your home directory. So we're going to learn today how you can use GNU STO to basically link all your .files to your home folder. So let's say we've got our configuration file stored in a directory under the home directory called .files, like we should have already. Uh, we can easily create symbolic links to the files in this directory to the equivalent locations in the home directory using the stow.dot command. And that's to be run from within that .files folder because we're saying in the files in this folder, we want to link these to the home folder. Uh, but before we run that, let's actually take a look at what's already in the dot, dot .files folder that I have as an example. And uh, we'll, we'll check out the dot .files folder and the home directory to see the current state of all the files there. So I'm going to jump into this terminal, and in, uh, I guess this is Ubuntu 20.04 um, VM. Uh, I'm going to look at dot .files folder first. So let's just check out uh, the dot .files. And we have a dot .config folder, dot .emacs.d, license file, readme.org. That profile. So there's a collection of files here that we want to keep as shared configuration files across multiple machines, plus some other files that may have documentation and, and other information like that. If we check out the home folder, we'll see that uh, none of those same directories are represented. We don't have a .emacs.d, we don't have a readme.org, we don't have, I mean, we do have a .config folder, but that actually is part of the uh, Linux desktop specification. So a lot of programs will put there configuration inside of this .config folder. So you'll see folders for various different programs. Um, so basically what we're going to do is try to symlink all of the files inside of this folder into the home folder so that our programs that we use can pick up the configuration files that we stored in our .files folder. So uh, now we can run that stow command that I mentioned before, but we're going to CD into the .files folder first and then run stow dot and then we're going to see what it actually did. So let's go into the dot .files folder. I'm going to run stow dot. And now it doesn't really give us any output, doesn't say anything happened. But if we use ls-al on the home directory, we can see that it actually did create some symbolic links to the dot .profile file, to this notes.org file, uh, to this misc folder, and our uh, .emacs.d folder. So um, really easy, just one command. It was able to create all those uh, symbolic links directly. One other thing we should take a look at is that inside the config folder, we also have a symbolic link to the polybar folder, which is actually inside of the dot dot file slash dot config folder. <clears throat> so uh, let's talk about how GNU STO works. Oh, one, one last thing I want to mention is that it's possible that you're going to receive an error saying that the target file or link already exists. 
um, if you haven't cleaned up those existing files in your home directory already, the solution there is just to delete those files. If you've already backed them up, um, then you should be able to run Sto and everything will be linked correctly. All right, so the way that this works is that GNU Sto walks the file and directory hierarchy of the directory that's passed as the source. So in, the, in this case, we're saying Sto dot, which means uh, in this case, dot means the current directory. So when, when we CD into our dot files folder, we're telling Sto take all the files in this folder walk over all of the files and directories, and then make symbolic links into the equivalent locations in the target directory, which is the home directory in this case. Uh, the important thing to be aware of here is that our .files directory must have the same layout as where those files should be placed under the home directory. This is the only way that Sto, the only way that Sto knows how to link a file to a target location is just by following the st same folder structure in the source directory and then replicating that into the destination directory. And when it makes these links, it will do smart linking based on uh, whether the directory structure in the home folder already exists. So we already have that .config folder in the home folder, so it only link, link the polybar subfolder to the home folder. So it, it sort of knows how to reconcile those things, which is good. So just make sure that your .files folder has the equivalent subdirectory structure in place as it should be in the home folder so that all your symbolic links get created correctly. Um, and the other thing you might have noticed is we didn't actually specify what the target directory is. We call sto dot, but we don't say where to put the, uh, the, dot, the, the links for the dot files folder into the home folder. And the reason why is that uh, by default, sto automatically assumes that the target directory is the parent directory of the directory that you've chosen. So in this case, the dot files directory's parent directory is the home directory. So when you run sto dot inside of the dot files directory, it automatically picks the parent directory, which is home to make all the symbolic links in, which is great because all it means is that uh, in our case, it's very easy. We just run sto dot inside a folder that's directly under the home directory and we get all the symbolic links set up, no configuration needed, it, it works perfectly. So if you wanna see what the equivalent parameters are to sto in case maybe you wanna change where your uh, source directory is, <clears throat> excuse me, you can uh, use the dash dash dir for the uh, parameter for the source directory, in this case, dot files, and dash dash target for the target directory, or the shortened forms of dash d and dash t. And um, this means you have basically full control over where the source and target directories are. And uh, a little tip here is that if you keep your doc files directory somewhere other than the home folder, like let's say you have a folder where you keep all your Git repositories and you wanna keep your doc files folder there as well, uh, you'll definitely need to uh, use this dash D and dash T parameters to make sure that the right locations get picked. Um, but you don't wanna to have to type that in every time you wanna run sto. So definitely create a simple bash script that makes it easy to run sto with the correct parameters. And I'm actually gonna show you an example, one of those a little bit later in this video that you can just take and use yourself if you want to. All right, so by default, uh, GNU sto actually does a pretty good job of ignoring common files and directories that you may not want to have linked back into your home directory. Like let's say a readme file, a license file, source control folders like .git, et cetera. Those things don't need to be linked back. You really only want the configuration files to be linked. Um, now, if you check out this link I, I have here, it actually takes you to the GNU Sto documentation where it shows you the default list of ignore um, or files and directories that are ignored. So if you wanna know what's there by default, you can check that out. But let's say that you have other files or directories in your .files folder that you don't want to have linked into your home directory. For example, our .files folder actually has a file called notes.org, and that really doesn't need to be in the home folder. It's something that just stays in our .files repository. So if we wanna skip files like this and not have them be linked, we can create another file inside of the .files folder called .sto local ignore. And if you've ever used git before and you've seen a git ignore file, this is a similar concept where each line of this file should be a string or a regular expression representing any file or directory pattern that you do not want to have linked to your target folder. So you can see an example right here. Um, we've got a few different items in this list for this file, like the .git folder, the misc folder that we saw before, and then any folder that ends with .org. And if you use Emacs and have a literate configuration set up with uh, org mode and org babel, then you might wanna have this if you have all your org files in the top level of your .files folder because you don't want those to be linked into your home folder. So let's actually try that out right now. I'm gonna copy over this configuration and then um, I'm gonna go into the dot files folder. I'm gonna use vim really quickly, sto local ignore. And then I'll just paste in the stuff that I copied. Whoops, I'm gonna go 
just clean it up a little bit here. And now if I save this, then we can take a look at what's in our home folder. And I'm going to remove the stuff that we don't want and see if it gets recreated the next time we run STO. So I'm going to remove misc. I'm going to remove notes.org. So um, rmrf uh, home notes.org, rmrf home uh, misc. So now those things aren't there anymore. And then if I were to run STO dot and look at what's in our home folder again, then we'll see that, uh, oh, now this license file pops up, but the misc and um, notes.org files are gone so that's good it did actually uh, obey what we said about the um the misc folder and the org file so those then no longer get linked but now all of a sudden this license file shows up and the reason why that happens is because when you specify your own custom sto local ignore file it overrides that default set of ignores that GNU sto uses so if you want that license file to also be ignored you're going to have to go back into your uh, sto file and then add that line to the file. And that's the reason why I had that commented out here so that I could make that example. So I'm gonna save this again. I'm gonna go remove the uh, license file or the symbolic links to, link to the license file from the home folder. And we can see that it's gone now. And I'm gonna run stow dot again. And then I'll look at the home folder one last time and we'll see that the license file did not get created. So whenever you start having a lot more stuff in your dot files folder it's pretty likely that you're gonna have to use a stow local ignore file. So just keep in mind that uh, you're going to have to set up some stuff for that and make sure that when, when you finally override the defaults, you're going to have to be a little bit more explicit about which things you want to ignore. So you can just use that example that I provided you with as a guide and then add more things that you need to there. Uh, one last thing that I forgot to mention before is that um, when you run STO multiple times, it actually will just... Uh, continue forward without giving you any errors because what it does is it checks all the existing symbolic links to see if they're pointing to the desired target location and if they already do point there then it just does nothing the only time it will ever complain to you is if you have a normal file in a location or normal file or folder in the location where it's trying to place a link then it will it will complain but otherwise you can run sto as many times as you want and it will just you know have the same outcome which is a really nice thing that, uh, that it does all right so once again you can just check out that uh, link to the sto manual for types and syntax of ignore list if you want to have uh, see more about the ways that you specify those uh the, those ignore uh, the ignore listing basically so cleaning up symbolic links so like for if some reason you would like to get rid of all the symbolic links that gnu sto created in your home folder you can actually do that very easily just by adding one extra parameter to the normal way that you invoke sto which is the dash capital d parameter so uh, I'm going to go back to our config here, uh, take one last look at the home folder, and then I'm going to run sto d dot because we're still in the dot files folder. And when I do that, I'll look at the home folder again. And now that dot profile file is gone, dot emacs dot d folder is gone. Uh, it basically cleans up all of the symbolic links that it had created so that they're not there any longer. And, you know, you may not really need to do this ever, but in case you ever just want to clean up your home folder, get rid of all those symbolic links, that's a very uh, quick and easy way to do that. So I just wanted to point that out. And uh, one last tip that I'll mention is that if you use Git to commit your configuration files to a repository that you share between multiple machines, like I do, uh, don't forget to run sto each time after you sync your configuration file updates so that any new files get linked into the proper location. And you know, you may wonder why after you sync, all of a sudden your configuration is broken. It's probably because some file that you're uh, expecting to have has not actually been linked into your home folder. So uh, your configuration doesn't load correctly. So to make sure that you never forget to do this, you can actually use a script that I'm that I created called sync.files to automate the whole process. And what the script does is it will stash your local changes, anything that you've changed locally that you haven't committed yet. It basically stores them away in a safe place and then pulls any new changes from the remote repository. Uh, in this case, it's the master branch, but if you use a different branch name like main, you maybe want to change that. And then once it pulls those changes, it will reapply those local changes that you had uh, by using stash pop. And then it will run stow on that folder so that any new files get linked into the uh, appropriate locations. And if you use this script, you definitely might want to consider keeping this in your dot files repository or dot files folder under a bin subfolder and then add that to your path so that you have access to this script anywhere from inside of your shell. So uh, this script is not that long. It may look a little bit complex if you've never looked at uh, bash shell script before, but uh, basically all it does is just run 
um, get stash to save your changes. It pulls the changes from master and then reapplies your local changes by using get stash pop. And then it does one last check using git diff to see if any merge conflicts have happened uh, by reapplying your changes just so you have a chance to clean those up. And then if everything's clean, it just runs stow dot and then it links everything back into your home folder. So this should be helpful to you if you uh, want to have one command that will sync all your dot files and then uh, run stow dot. So by the time of recording this video, I haven't actually made a video about using Git to manage your dot files yet. I will do that at some point in the future, but if you're watching in the future, you may have already seen that video. So either way, just note that if you use Git to manage your dot files, this script might be helpful to you. And uh, I'll just point out one last time that you may need to change the name of the master branch in the script uh, right here to main if your repository uses that name for the main branch uh, instead. All right, so the last thing I'll say is that uh, if you want more information about GNU Sto and details on other ways that it can be used, because it's not just for dot files, it's actually for other things as well, uh, check out the GNU Sto manual. So I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, uh, leave a note in the comments and like the video, of course. Uh, also, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments and check out the link in the description to find where you can come chat with the System Forgotters community, both on Discord and IRC, if you want to ask more questions. And until next time, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here and uh, happy hacking. We'll see you.